Okay, good evening everybody. My name is Jochem Alfring. My Chinese name is Aoyo. And uh, last semester I studied at the Beijing University of Technology as part of my uh, Master Architecture degree from the Eindhoven University of Technology. Following the sheet. Okay, I took my camera with me all the time. I took many photographs. And this evening I want to show you a complete different culture some uh, my own experiences, but also some hard facts about China, to understand China, which will soon have the largest economy of the world, a little bit more better. And uh, it will be the first time in the modern era that an, uh, the largest economy of the world will be that of a developing country instead of a developed country, and with very, very, very different civilizational roots as the West. I took my pictures. Uh, myself and I'm waiting for the next year, but uh, okay, here it is. I want to show you some very interesting things. And of course we know China is big, huge, demographically and geographically. Some extreme facts in Beijing, there are more people living in one city than in the Netherlands combined. And in, in the whole China, 1.3, more than 1.3 billion people are living there. And if you compare it to Europe, it's much more than that. Now, as a consequence, people everywhere on the streets, on the subway, on the buses, it's uh, sometimes unbelievable. And there's even a job in the subway to, push, to get people out of the subway during rush hour because it's too crowded to get out of it. And the last one I took in Shanghai is another result. It's uh, the roads. They are for cars, cyclists, pedestrians, underneath, up, above each other. It's crazy. And um, the white one I took in uh, Hong Kong. I, I find it very interesting how people can just live so close to each other. And in fact, in, in Beijing, they, people used to live in, in buildings like this. It's the completely opposite as the high-rise buildings. Only one level, and uh, designed by an, uh, inspired by the design of Feng Shui, is to design with the natural environment. Um, for example, the main buildings they are orientated towards the south to block the cold winter wind, but allowing the sunlight to shine into, into the rooms. And uh, yeah, big families used to live together in buildings like this, with a courtyard in the middle, and there's a very good atmosphere to, uh, to meet each other over there. But the times, they are changing. A lot of old buildings, they are destroyed and just replaced by the big high-rise buildings like this. And uh, sometimes I find it a little bit difficult to see it was, uh, that so many cultural heritage was just destroyed. But um, all land in China is owned by the government and they decide what to do with it. And um, the state is also very, very different from uh, this country. You can, uh, you can feel the tension even among students when you talk about uh, doubtful political decisions. Sometimes it's... Uh, Really extreme. For example, example uh, social networks. So, uh, the, the government wants to keep people under control. And social networks, for example, Facebook, Twitter, but also YouTube and Dropbox, they are not allowed, so they are blocked in China. The Chinese people, they call it the Great Firewall. Yeah, the city life is always very chaotic. Um, it's a de developing country, but it's not all the time so, so safe. For example, the, the guys on the, on the left picture, they are fixing something in the street and just cars drive around them. And the electrician over there is, is fixing the cables, just walking around them. And uh, one time I was lost in the countryside, I went cycling, I was happy, but in the end it was dark and I couldn't find my hostel anymore. But uh, a Chinese family uh, helped me, I could sleep with them. It's the first time I experienced a very uh, poor living circumstances, but still the most of the Chinese people live today. On the right picture, you see the, the toilet outside. Um, back in the city life, you can still find a lot of beautiful traditional Chinese architecture, even though a lot is, a lot is destroyed during the Cultural Revolution in 1966, with um, the, the, the special wooden structures and, um, you know, besides the traditional architecture, there's also a lot of modern architecture with world-famous architects like M. Colas, Sarah Hadid and Herzog and de Moron. But uh, I have to be honest, sometimes visiting those buildings was a little bit disappointing 
because the, the usage of the building were not so good. A very bad thing about Beijing is the air condition. I want to read the last row of this air quality guide with a numeric value above 300. Health warnings of emergency conditions, the entire population is more likely to be affected. In Beijing it was normal, it was 40, 450 sometimes. So one day I started running and I came back and my throat hurt for one week. And this view should be amazing. People told me it was amazing, it was on a hill in the center of Beijing. But uh, as you can see, I visited on a wrong day, full of smoke. And China has a very specific problem in the cities. A lot of people, but not so many space. And from now until 2030, 350 million people will move from the county side, side towards the cities. And that's more than the entire population of the United States today. China will have many cities with more than 20 million inhabitants. And the picture above is, uh, it's, uh, it sounds like, uh, looks a little bit futuristic, but it will be soon reality in China. It's a big bus traveling on the road, and, uh, but on a rail, and just cars can drive underneath it to reduce traffic jams. Okay, I'm very enth enthusiastic about uh, Beijing. Also maybe one of the most best recent therapists. I met uh, Emmanuel. She's not from China, but she's from France, and today it is her first day in Eindhoven. And I'm very happy to explore more new adventures together. Thank you.